right so let's see what constant throughput timer is about so i'll okay i'll add here itself what a problem uh, constant timer constant throughput timer okay so if you see the values the parameters what we need to pass it here what is the target throughput you need to provide basically are you clear uh, and understanding what throughput is it's kind of how many samples or how many bytes it's returning per minute so we say it as throughput may be measured in terms of bytes or requests or anything it's like how many requests we are getting from server per minute that is actually we are trying to uh, tell here target throughput so okay let me take you one real time example just to wait i'll open my notepad now assume that there are total four petrol bunks okay i'm just telling you out of box example to make you understand about throughput okay assume that there are total four petrol bunks and each bunk can provide uh, can pump 100 liters of petrol in one minute okay 100 liters of petrol right so that's the capacity so that means four servers assume that there are total four servers four petrol bunks four servers each petrol bunk 100 liters each server 100 requests can serve per minute just assume just compare both so that means total this petrol bunk in a big petrol count the total four bunks right 400 liters uh, is the throughput per minute it can provide this is the maximum throughput that this petrol bunk can provide these are four different bunks available in that petrol uh, bunk organization so by seeing this example what can you say that what is the performance of that petrol bunk and we say there are total four petrol bunks inside it in it and 400 liters you can get because each petrol bank can give 100 liters and we say 400 liters per minute you can get it if you go to that way that petrol bunk shop fine now here in our application we have four servers maintaining that application and we can say that each server can give 100 requests per minute so ultimately 400 requests per minute you can get it that is the maximum and now two you cars assume that two cars just came into that shed petrol bunk shed fine so now what is the throughput it is providing so two cars went into two petrol bunks out of four so two servers are ideal that means two <laughs> petrol bunks are ideal now fine so two are working for two cars it is providing 100 for one car 100 for one car and output what it is getting is throughput is 200 requests 200 liters per minute it is serving 200 liters per minute right now when there are two cars that means 200 requests per minute when there are two users fine if two users are hitting the application at a time it it is serving uh, 200 requests it's the throughput it is giving and 200 requests we have idle if you go with the four users and it gives 400 requests fine because still the two servers will come into active mode and their services if you go beyond four users still if you go for 10 users still it give uh, 400 requests only right because capacity itself uh, 400 so if there are as i told you in this example four petrol bunks four cars has 10 cars came okay they should stand in queue however it can serve only four cars at a time it's just uh, pumping into four cars the remaining four cars should stand in queue however the output throughput will not change our uh, maximum it can give is 400 if you go for two users it will give you 200 three 300 
four users four hundred, but fifth user also it stands at four hundred only. That is the maximum throughput it's giving to you. Fine. So that's how you can actually calculate throughput. How many requests per second are serving? How many requests per second the server is providing us? Fine. So that's about just throughput. Hope you got clear picture now by taking this real time example. Yeah. Let's go back to our script. Now, what is your target throughput? And I say 200 samples required. Fine. So it can serve 400 samples. I don't know what, uh, how many samples this uh, web tools application serve, but just assume that in your case, it can serve 400 samples. Sample means nothing but requests, 400 requests per minute. But my target is let it serve 200 requests per second. If it exceeds, just pass. Now, uh, where this timer will come into real picture, now just get understand. Okay. Now four cars, six cars coming into petrol bunk shed. Fine. What owner has said to me, only serve 200 liters per minute. Though you have four bunks, serve only 200 liters per minute. If then only two cars will be served, but still two, if there are six cars coming, still four are pending. Make it pass, make it hold. Okay. Let them wait. In the same way we are saying timer will make let that users wait because this guy has provided target throughput only 200 requests per minute. So as per this request it will serve only for 200 requests per minute. What all other threads when other threads are trying to access system it will make them pass. Once this serving is done then those threads will start execution. Okay. So execution between the threads the pass the pass time depends upon the throughput now got it so in our earlier session we have just went with a constant timer by putting 300 milliseconds wait okay so it constantly it would wait the 300 seconds but here how many seconds it should wait to other thread to start it depends upon your throughput if throughput is only 100 go ahead don't wait just start but if it is 200 then wait then wait till it's served and then come in. Okay. So this is where constant throughput timer is used. And as I told you in the example, if database have a backend servers, whatever it may be, if it crosses thousand requests per minute, it might take some time to update. In that cases, please put in a pass. Okay. Let be in a pass mode. All other users coming into execution will be in a pass mode. Once this request come down or the serving is done, then other request will fall into the execution mode. Got it? So this is where you use constant throughput timer. So calculate throughput based on this thread only. If you have multiple threads, uh, if there are total 10 threads running at a time, it calculates for all the threads and it gives the output. It's up to you what you use in this drop down. Okay, so loop count 10. If you run this, okay, and however, I'll disable. Let's disable this uh, constant timer, recursion random timer. And we are, we cannot accurately see the output, how it is getting here. Fine. Uh, because we ha don't have information about how many bytes it is returning uh, per minute. For that, you have to do other operation. We are just randomly recorded it, right? And let's see, 7 to 18.52 and next 4 seconds. That means uh, what is the timer constant? 1000 samples we have provided it, right? So the first request which is served, the number of requests which is returning is less than 1000. That's the reason the second thread started immediately. If this thread serving crosses 1000, then it will wait until this uh, throughput comes down and then this will get added. Okay, so that's it about constant throughput timer and pretty much about the timers concepts. So in 90% of the cases, you might not get this, uh, you might not get the use of these timers when you are actually writing a script, but whenever you feel that there, you, if you want a minute gap, then you can go ahead with these timers. So 
that's it about this section thank you